Go for okay. it. All right, good. Um, I'll grab the microphone. So I have, I have, I think, uh, six pages of notes from yesterday's discussions, four pages of notes from today's discussions that some very energetic grad students uh, compiled during our discussion. So I want to thank Brenna and uh, is Catherine. Oh, okay. Catherine. There's Catherine, yes. Uh, the two of them uh, took notes for our discussions and they did a great job with that. And I'm hoping that we can make those available with Dennis. Right there. Yes, we can make those available on the New Cities website. So what I wanted to go over uh, now was just a sort of a compilation of what we came up with as the action items for our particular workshop. So, so remember our workshop was talking about uh, community-based nursing and uh, technology related to aging. And, we, and you can see the specific questions that we have for this. So here's what we came up with for action items. There was some discussion about having some overarching big, big picture vision. And it was even proposed that this could be kind of grandiose to say that our ultimate goal is, well, maybe we don't want to state it this way, but that, that our ultimate goal is actually to change or fix, shall we say, fix the healthcare system in this country. Right? <laughs> Modest <laughs> aspirations. <laughs> Fair well, enough. you know, you, if you're not going to be, um, you know, broad and, and far thinking, why not? I mean, it's like go big or go home, right? <laughs> so that's, that may be kind of the ultimate goal behind this. Um, but we realized that that's a very overarching broad goal and we need to have some more specific, um, more short term types of things that we could do. So that might be our long term goal, but it's not something that we're gonna start with. So we have to boil that down into some smaller piece, short term items that we can work on. Now the other thing, just to refocus that. The other thing today was, let's use the stair-step model as the overarching goal of improving function for older adults and improving their overall quality of life and changing the trajectory. Yes, you can keep that one, I'll keep this one. Yeah, so, so that's, that's one possibility we could use that. Right, right. The squaring the life curve. Squaring the life curve. Or um, optimizing the area under the curve depending on whether you're an engineer or you're a clinician. Um, so that's another possibility. So here's the action items. Uh, having, coming up with some kind of a vision statement that might kind of capital, uh, caption, capture that long-term goal, as well as identifying some shorter-term end goals. Putting together a steering committee or executive board that would be made up of uh, representatives across multiple institutions and different disciplines that would be available to do things like organize um, additional meetings, additional workshops uh, that could bring people together, but sort of a, a core group of people that could help with that effort. And we collected names. So these are the names that we got of people that are interested in being a part of that effort. So John Shree, uh, myself, Lee Jung Kim, Tracy LaPierre, is that how you say it? Greg King, Eric Hughes, George Cronus, uh, Kathy, Katie Boyer, Kathy Boyer uh, Chesson. Right. Is that right? Uh, oh, there's Kathy. There you are. <laughs> Kathy and Nelda Godfrey, who was graciously. Um, nominated by someone else. But <laughs> she was out of the room at the time. She was out of the room at the time, yeah. But, but she, she graciously agreed, so. So, we, so those are some potential groups. And in fact, what we sort of saw as, um, you know, eventually what might come to pass is that we have a smaller, perhaps a smaller executive board or steering committee, but eventually we saw this as having some other groups uh, that might be like ad hoc committees or targeting specific topics 
that may encompass uh, you know, a broader group of people. So eventually, there's certainly plenty of opportunity to get involved. And I'm hoping that there are some names from workshop two that would also be interested in being part of this you know, steering board or you know, executive committee. So some of the other things we came up with, um, we were talking about capturing a profile of the skill sets of people across this consortium group that, would, that could be posted online and that would help match people up. So the idea of capturing um, what sorts of things, that, what sorts of potentials that you have, as well as capturing existing clinical problems that people might want to propose that ought to be addressed uh, with uh, technology, uh, potential technologies that could be used to address problems, uh, test beds that might be available, data sets that might be available, and also uh, communities that may be uh, leveraged, such as, you know, it was even proposed to use communities like uh, community gardens, um, uh, what was the other term, horticultural therapy, um, you know, partnerships for some of these, so there are some specific ideas that people had proposed, uh, communities that they were aware of that might be used as models for future partnerships. So to kind of collect all of these together, so this would represent sort of the current uh, group and effort that we know of that might be leveraged and they might provide a mechanism for matching up for future work. Then one of the things we suggested was that we have people submit proposals to this executive committee or our steering board uh, for future workshops, future meetings, and then they would decide whether there was enough interest to be able to support that kind of effort, but um, there was some discussion about the fact that we may need, we need, to, we need to provide opportunities for people to come together again. You know, we don't want everybody to go home after this uh, workshop and then that be the end of it. And we can continue to have some sort of um, video conferencing sessions, but there's no there's no substitute, complete substitute for these face-to-face -face meetings. And so we need to have some other reasons to get together. Uh, so some of these proposals could be based on specific topic areas. They might be based on organizing uh, around a particular funding opportunity or some proposed project that people want to work on. And it would give people an excuse then to get together. <coughs> Uh, we also suggested that there might be reason to develop a multidisciplinary survey to collect some new integrated data set. There's a comment here that says C group two. Perhaps group two is working on that. Um, living laboratory development. We spent actually quite a bit of time yesterday talking about the idea of collecting a, a participant pool uh, that might be a combination of people living in the community as well as institutional housing settings. And going out and making the initial effort to connect up with these folks so that we know that they're on board, that they're willing to be partners. So as people have project ideas in the future, we can include some of those partnerships. It's like they're all, it's already streamlined so that we can include them in the future. Uh, there was a suggestion to have a monthly lecture series, perhaps on Saturday mornings, that would be delivered using video conferencing, like a webinar, that would be free for the I-70 corridor consortium members, and perhaps we would charge a fee for outsiders, and that could be used to fund this particular effort. But this would be another way that we can help get people connected up by having some kind of ongoing mechanism where we have people kind of incrementally present their work. And it might be that they present you know, project ideas or that, that things will come out of that, potential project ideas will come out of that. Um, we also talked about identifying who is missing, as Rick mentioned. Um, who is it that's not here? Uh, and and it's, this can include some of the groups that he mentioned 
but also for us to go back to our respective universities and see who is it at each of our institutions that ought to be a, a member of this group. And then finally, we talked about establishing some kind of agreement among the universities that might be in the form initially of a memorandum of understanding, but that something that would provide a mechanism for us to get started and, and perhaps especially address the issue of intellectual property. Now, as we develop new things and we have the, these new ideas and new intellectual property things coming up from the group, how are we going to manage that? And we'd like to proactively get something in place so that it, it doesn't blow up on our faces, you know, three years down the street. So did I miss anything, those of you that were part of our group? So can we do all of that in the next six months? <laughs> six weeks. Six weeks. Oh, oh there you go. There you go. Go big or go home. Yeah, change the health care system. Yeah, six weeks. Fix the health care system. Yeah, we'll do that in By six that weeks. By that time, public we'll care will be fixed. Okay, so is that it? Mm -hmm. Okay, next. Uh, it's kind of surprising how little overlap there is. There's sort of a little bit of overlap, but less than one might think. I think David and I were both delighted with the conversations yesterday and today about all of the wonderful things people are doing and wonderful ideas and activities um, that people are doing. And we'd like to capture that, uh, many of those examples, um, and, and grow those kinds of ideas. So um, we kind of have two and a half suggestions. Right? Uh, one is um, we really want to build a website that would uh, continue uh, this kind of, of dialogue. It would include uh, things like having a, a syllabus bank where we could uh, post information about our uh, courses, um, uh, our certificate programs, our degree programs. It's very difficult to find that information. <coughs> Uh, and there are a lot of uh, different kinds of ideas out there, particularly to promote this kind of cross-fertilization among different uh, academic disciplines or different kinds of professional uh, training approaches. As part of that, we would also have um, a kind of a, a best practices module um, that would have examples of both in-class and extramural exercises and activities. Uh, what works, what doesn't work, examples of um, lesson plans, uh, uh, assessment rubrics, and other kinds of things, because people have just developed lots of very interesting kinds of, of um, enrichment activities, uh, and we, c I think, could all benefit from the, um, the, the real cleverness and insight that uh, others have, have developed and pioneered. Um, this could also include uh, links to um, other sites. Uh, turns out there are a lot of kinds of resources out there that some, someone in the discussion knew about that others uh, were unfamiliar with. And I think, to, and again, it's this issue of sort of bridging the disciplines and uh, bridging the professions in ways that could be uh, mutually beneficial. Um, we'd like to uh, see something like a, an a ask an expert kind of module. Um, the collective experience, the collective insight, the collective wisdom of, of the group well, is pretty astonishing. Um, but often uh, working within our home institutions, we don't really have the, the, the expert to, to turn to. So a kind of peer mentoring approach that could be focused on particular exercises, uh, uh, recommendations for textbooks or supplemental materials, supplemental activities, um, could be very helpful, particularly for those of us, and I think it's many of us, even those at larger institutions, who feel somewhat isolated um, and um, um, uh, uh, in, in our own area. 
Um, and then finally, we'd like to develop a, a and this is the old one piece of overlap, I think, it's a webinar series, right? Uh -huh. um, either you said, what, monthly on Saturdays? Maybe, right? Uh, but uh, it's, you, you could, we would need people to talk about areas of expertise, somebody who has uh, been particularly successful at working uh, in uh, particular kinds of sites, say assisted living centers. What are the issues? What are the barriers? What are the best practices? How do you get access? How do you maintain that access? Uh, what, are, what are the challenges? Uh, someone who's working with a particular kind of, of data. What are tools and techniques for analysis? Someone who uh, has developed an innovative curriculum, talking about that, that curriculum. There could be all sorts of topics uh, for, um, oh, that could be handled through a kind of webinar uh, a mechanism. So, so that's one suggestion. The uh, uh, second suggestion is an idea of trying to develop um, a summer workshop or summer institute that would move along the I-70 corridor, uh, being hosted by different institutions uh, along the I-70 corridor, but that would be open to uh, students at all levels, various levels, um, from our uh, different institutions. The real challenge is working out things like credit and tuition, but there are examples and it's been done, so perhaps we could figure that out. Again, we would have uh, faculty uh, from our uh, academic institutions, but we might also invite uh, experts from um, businesses or uh, agencies in the, the silver industry, now that I've learned that term, um, who could also prov uh, serve as uh, instructors for different modules of the, the Summer Institute. It might include things like site visits or particular resources that are uh, a strength of the, the host uh, institution. Um, and um, we think it would be important that it include partnerships with the community colleges uh, along the I-70 corridor as well, because we're all seeing a sort of transition from uh, to the, what are sometimes called two and two programs, two years at a community college, transitioning to two years at a, a university. Um, and so trying to um, uh, expand uh, uh, knowledge about gerontology and aging studies to our community college partners uh, would be important, as well as trying to um, involve um, local business partners and other agencies. Um, not so much filling the need for sort of continuing ed training, but in terms of uh, developing uh, expertise and um, applications that uh, might uh, support the, the th whatever the, the theme of the, the summer workshop series. Right? And then the half point is that, um, and, and it would probably be part of the, the website, is to develop um, um, a, a set of uh, resources that could support research efforts. In particular, um, many of us have uh, participant registries uh, that uh, under varying kinds of conditions uh, might be accessible by other members of, of our emerging consortium. Um, so uh, what kinds of participant registries do you have and wh uh, what are the uh, uh, characteristics of composition uh, of the participants and under what conditions might you be willing to uh, share access. Um, uh, similarly, um, other kinds of resources, um, uh, research sites that you've cultivated that might be willing to uh, um, uh, open their doors to uh, other researchers, or um, materials, kapora, uh, video, or, uh, uh, text, uh, other kinds of recordings that could be useful for uh, others for uh, secondary analyses or um, alternative kinds of analyses. Um, so that those kinds of uh, uh, resources that might support uh, uh, lines of research could also be part of the, the 
um, website postings that we would, the, a library that we would try to develop. Is that pretty, pretty much it? You want to add anything? Mm -hmm. yeah. We're going to be busy. Yes. <laughs> We bring no names. We don't have the same press gang skills that were used in the other. Um, I, I have some lists, though. Well, so you know the names? The names came from the grad student. She's the one that asked who, who. And she's the one that put down the names. Because she knew somebody was going to ask her later to figure it out. So is there some discussion out here? Would you like to respond to that? I have I have a um, suggestion. Okay. One of the things I would like to see is the uh, something set up to make it easy for us to have grad students just move from one institution to the next. Or it might be that you have undergraduates trained at one institution and then they go to another place for grad school, or maybe they'll do a summer internship uh, yeah. at a different institution. So I, I love the idea of the summer institute. But you could do it on a smaller scale with individual mm -hmm. students mm -hmm. kind of going back and forth. Mm -hmm. And it might be an opportunity to get it's a great, interdisciplinary kinds it's of things. That's a great, great idea. So we'll be willing to host as a placement site others. They keep their affiliation with their home university, deal with the tuition credit issues there. But you, you'd be yeah, a, just, a, a, welcome to host them for it. Right, right. So the other thing that that would do is help um, researchers across different institutions work together if they exchange grad students for the summer. Randy? One suggestion uh, that was made was uh, some kind of list of people and expertise and so forth. And perhaps a, an easy way to do that is just use a LinkedIn group where everybody can just sign on to the group automatically have uh, you know uh, a fair amount of information about that and contact information etc. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, I, my, my comment was that would require that one actually did LinkedIn <laughs> and I never do. <laughs> no you make the students do it. Oh, the students. You I thought make, he was talking you about us. You can make the students do it. I've, I've heard that there are some places. <laughs> We're supposed to be going away from that attitude of making the students. No, no, no. <laughs> They're supposed to want to do it. <coughs> okay, maybe I phrased that wrong. Yeah, That's we, we got to gotta work on it, right? So. We're, we're getting out of the slave driver no, mode. But <laughs> I've heard that, that there are some sites, uh, like RU sites, NSF RU sites, research experience for undergraduates that now use the social networking yeah. um, to be able to, to facilitate keeping track of the students as they finally graduate, if, you know, if they end up going on to grad school someplace else, or they go out to industry, it's a way for them to keep track of them. And so, I, so the students are, I think the students are, well, strongly encouraged <laughs> to uh, to participate in that so that they become part of that network so that they can be tracked. So this could this would work though. Okay. Just to, for what okay. this to, okay. Kathy. Um, I had the opportunity to sit in on both workshops and it seems that one area that also crossed over with both is the, the importance of the community partners outside of the university. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if there might be some thought at some point as the consortium organizes to have some some purposefulness, some, something deliberate of bringing in the key community partners and, and emphasizing partnership with with the consortium members so that it, it, it really has some structure. But it, as I recall in both conversations, it really there's an interdependence on um, finding the right community partners for internships or placements or um, on both. So I just wonder if there might be something more deliberate that might be constructive. And maybe Rebecca's model might be of how she um, has her her relationships with um, foundations might be the way to start. 
I see that as something that could be folded into the, the kind of a website so that there could be uh, where people have existing uh, linkages and existing uh, ties to uh, community partners, that, that that information could be made available uh, as, uh, as placement sites or for students at all, at all levels or uh, uh, potential research collaborations. And I think I'm suggesting a little bit closer relationship than mm -hmm. the listing on a website, which is mm -hmm. a, a wonderful resource, mm -hmm. but much of this is face-to-face -face mm -hmm. developing trust. And so a deliberate structure that can maximize that. Katie. Katie. Just an idea that struck me sitting back here as a social scientist. Uh, have you thought about leveraging a documentary about what we're doing through PBS? <coughs> I thought about it, yep. no, but probably never. Yeah, how has. do we, how do we? I, I think yeah. we're maybe changing history and we don't have any kind of our journalism school. Oh, we have one too. Yeah, good luck with that. No, they're always coming to us for ideas oh, for stuff. They, they might, always do. Yeah, they might. They might be. Interested. You can't do anything at in Mizzou, at Mizzou or in that whole community without somebody being a reporter in the group. Or you've been videotaping. You know, or yeah. No. Well, right. actually, we have a media lab right here at KU that's looking for projects. And well, there I've you go. Fabulous luck. Suggest it. Fabulous luck. Suggest it. And we can mention it on our, you know, in our J School faculty. They're always looking for projects. And the students, the students are always coming up and saying, can I do this? I mean, at the least, you could get one that's uh, that's part of a class project, that which may have debatable. Um, uh, Those are usually but, actually pretty but good. But they're not. Yeah, but they're, they're not bad. So, but that might kind of grab the attention. Of people, so. uh, Dennis? Dennis? Yeah. Well. Um, I can say that I'm very, very happy about what happened at this conference. I think it's quite exciting. I'm very happy that it's so exciting that I bounced back between the two groups. They were different, as you could tell, but uh, we had those videos available, and I encourage you to look at the other group's exchanges because they're very important and interesting. Um, it's been fantastic to have you all from nine universities across the I-70 corridor. These four people and others have worked very hard to make this uh, a good experience for all of you. And I hope that you will get to know each other better and that you will travel safely home. With that, thank you very much for coming. So We've been a great group. Yes. Dennis, yes, thank you so much for coming. too if we could put a sign up sheet up. So we were able to collect some names of people that were interested in being involved in the leadership of this, but we didn't get names of folks from the other workshop. So um, Dennis or, or Brenna or somebody could we put not, just a <laughs> sign up sheet here? So or why don't you just come why, why don't we do it a little more systematically. Okay. We're gonna, I think we're going to have some task forces, right? The task force on website development. I'm, I'm suggesting we try to proceed a little more systematically, that we set up some task forces. A task force on websites, a task force on summer workshops and exchanges, a task force on uh, some task forces out of, out of your group. And we invite people to to write 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 their name down on the task force. So we try to be a little, a little more organizational. Okay, can I recommend that you send that out by email? Because there are people that have already Yes, that, that's why I think, I think we need to be more systematic and send it out as a follow-up to this.